When a group of kind-hearted people rescued Bernie, an olive ridley sea turtle from the cold waters at Port Alberni near Vancouver, Canada, they set in motion a logistical challenge that ended with the turtle's release into the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean on September 8th. Bernie spent more than 10 months at the Oceanwise Conservation Association Vancouver Aquarium after his rescue. And what led to his rescue was that he was way off course and somehow took a wrong turn and ended up in Port Alberni, hence his name. Bernie is only the fourth olive ridley sea turtle to be recorded in the waters of British Columbia and the second treated at the Vancouver Aquarium. What happened to Bernie is that he got cold stunned. According to the aquarium, when the water temperature falls below 10 degrees Celsius, cold stunned sea turtles experience a decrease in heart rate and circulation, causing them to become lethargic to the point where they are unable to swim or forage. Because he was so far from the warmer waters where he could thrive, Bernie needed a ride. And this is where Turtles Fly 2 comes in. The charitable organization arranges for pilots with extra space in their airplanes to transport cold stunned turtles to aquariums in warmer climes where they can be rehabilitated and released. My friend, marketing and communications expert Jeff Miller has access to a speedy Piper Malibu jet prop DLX. He offered to fly Bernie and the mission was a go. It would have been too logistically challenging to pick up Bernie in Vancouver, Canada, so the plan was to drive him to Seattle. On the other side of the border, senior veterinarian Marty Halema was putting Bernie in a special crate and then driving him to meet us. Signature Flight Support, which sponsors Turtles Fly 2, welcomed us to Seattle's Boeing Field. Marty arrived with Bernie and consulted with Jeff on how best to load this 69-pound turtle into a relatively small space. They decided the best way would be to remove Bernie from the crate, then insert the crate into the cabin, then put Bernie in the crate, and that's exactly what they did. Bernie wasn't exactly happy about getting stuffed into a crate inside an airplane and flailed his flippers around a bit while going through the entryway. But soon enough he was safely inside and Marty closed up the crate. Although sea turtles need to stay wet, Marty said there wasn't much to do to Bernie during the trip other than try to get to San Diego without delay. So we quickly loaded up and taxied out and took off for our fuel stop at Reno, Nevada. This was a two hour leg and the weather was excellent until we got closer to Reno, which was socked in with smoke from all the wildfires in the Western US. I'd climbed back during the flight to check on Bernie and he really wasn't moving at all, which had us a bit worried. Even poking him didn't elicit any response. After landing in Reno and parking at Atlantic Aviation, which waived any fees for us once they learned about Bernie, Jeff and I checked on our turtle passenger to see if he was okay. Shining a flashlight at him, I finally saw him blink, which was a huge relief. He was gonna make it. After fueling up at Reno, we quickly departed for the two hour leg to San Diego, flying over a lot more smoky terrain. The air traffic controllers were extremely helpful, recognizing our call sign as that of a charitable flight, and one even asked us if we were the turtle flight. Signature Flight Support at San Diego guided us to our parking space, where the SeaWorld crew was waiting to bring Bernie to his temporary new home. They had brought some special equipment to make the job easier. Before removing Bernie from the airplane, they reached inside his crate and put a special jacket on him so he wouldn't be able to move his flippers around and possibly get injured. They had brought a larger box to transport Bernie, so they carefully pulled him out of the airplane and put him in the box, keeping on his jacket for the short ride to SeaWorld. Luckily, Eric Ochin, zoological curator at SeaWorld, asked if I wanted to go with him and watch Bernie get placed into his pool. Of course I did. Once we arrived at SeaWorld, Eric and animal care specialists Alexandra Rudin and Dominique DeFeo weighed and measured Bernie, and Dr. Tress Clark checked him over. Then it was time to let him into the pool. Never have I seen such a grateful turtle. 
Ernie quickly started swimming around and exploring the pool, trying to dive down to the bottom, which is normal turtle behavior, Tress told me. But it turns out that Bernie would have to wait a few hours before being able to dive as there was too much air inside his body and he would be buoyant for a little while. The plan was to let Bernie get fully acclimated to the warmer Southern California waters, then release him into the ocean. Originally, it was thought that this would take a few months, but only a week later, the SeaWorld crew put a GPS tracking device on Bernie and took him for a boat ride out into the ocean and let him go free. Thanks for a great adventure, Bernie, and thanks also to Turtle Supply 2, the Vancouver Aquarium, SeaWorld San Diego, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service.